Okay, I am going to discuss with you your guided notes about body paragraph. Please make sure that you have this paper in front of you. You have already gone through this assignment and written down um, what in pencil. Remember, that was important. Hopefully, you did it in pencil. Uh, you already have gone through this and you've written down what your thoughts are on what a topic sentence is. You've, in your own words, you've told me what you think transition words are, and in your own words, you've told me what your what what you think evidence is. So you've already gone through. And you've identified the parts of a body paragraph in your own words. So now our goal today is you're going to listen to my notes. You're going to watch the video, listen to my notes, and you're going to self-assess. You're kind of you're going to kind of grade uh, what you wrote down that you thought a topic sentence was. And what you can do is very easily with a different colored uh, ink, you can cross out words. You can, you know, draw little arrows that you want to add this word, you know, in here. And then you can also, if, you're, if, you're, if your written sentence is down here in your different colored ink, you could write above it. So basically, you're going to be revising your old definition. And once listening, once you have listened to my notes, you're going to self-assess your old definition and revise it and make changes into a better definition. So really what you're practicing here is looking at what you wrote down, listening to what it should be, and showing me that you understand what it should be by adding the correct material to your old definition. Right now, I think what I would like to do is show you an example of what it might look like when you're using a different colored ink over your pencil. Okay, so here you can see that I have my pencil right here, um, and then I have my green pen. And uh, when I first wrote this, I pretended like I knew very little about a topic sentence, and I wrote down that it tells what the paragraph will be about and what the main focus will be. Not bad. But then, as you are going to or you're about to listen to my definition of a topic sentence, look at how I revised and I added things in green that were in the notes that my original sentence was missing. So I added that it was the main focus, and I added an entire new sentence. I added it will always be one sentence, and it will always be the first sentence. So this was some important information that my original definition was missing. So I revised it by adding more specific notes that I knew the teacher would want me to have. Okay, so that's what it's going to kind of look like um, as you add notes, as you self-assess with a different colored ink. Okay, so keeping your self-assessment, your definitions out, let's take a look at your guided notes. I believe I Xerox them on a different colored paper, so it would be easy for you to distinguish the difference. Uh, I think it's like a light purple, maybe, a violet, if you will. So looking at that, you can see we're going to quickly kind of just discuss the main parts. And uh, these are your formal notes on how to write a body paragraph. So if at any time throughout this process, especially maybe even before your embedded assessment, if you want to look back at these notes as an extra review, that is not a bad idea. All right, so our main parts are you have your topic sentence, you have your transition words, you're going to have evidence, you're going to have a commentary starter, a commentary sentence, and a clencher. So these are the main parts of a body paragraph. And now you can see we're going to start talking about the definitions. So the first one is topic sentence. So right now you're looking at your definition for a topic sentence. You have a different colored ink pen in your hand. And we are going to talk about a topic sentence. And hopefully you're going to make some awesome good changes. All right. Your topic sentence um, introduces the focus of your paragraph. And it is basically, it's going to be one of your reasons from your thesis statement when you actually dive into a five-paragraph essay. But that is the future. That's kind of where we're moving towards. That's our goal uh, that we want to eventually get to, the bigger picture. But before we can write five paragraphs, we really need to be able to write one paragraph, don't we? So it's always going to be one sentence, and it will always be the first sentence. Now remember, in this video, it's going to be really easy for you to pause. So go ahead and pause. And I want you to add what you need to make your topic sentence better. Remember, you're not erasing your pencil, your original sentence. You are adding 
to it with a pen and making it better to make it look like my definition. So go ahead and pause the video and then when you're ready, unpause it and we'll move on to transition words. All right, transition words are basically words um, that are going to introduce your evidence. You, are, you will really truly have three of them for your paragraph. By the time you're done writing your body paragraph, you will have exactly, I'm not kidding, you will have exactly three transition words. They will let the reader know when you are done discussing one piece of evidence and now you're going to move on to the next. So if I were talking about a piece of evidence, I could use the transition word next. That clearly indicates to my reader, look, I'm done with this piece. Next, I'll be talking about my, uh, my additional pieces of evidence. So transition words are very helpful to tell the reader when you'll be moving on to your next piece of evidence. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and make any changes to your transition word definition. All right, let's take a look at evidence next. This sentence is going to support your topic sentence. That is its main job right here. So we gotta make sure that you have that in your sentence, on your notes. The reason in your topic sentence is your opinion. So now you're going to have to prove it with evidence. This is where your research will come into play. Be sure to include the title of your resource and the author's name to establish credibility. This is a really important word that we haven't really talked about yet, so I'll take this moment to do so. Credibility is kind of, you know, if somebody says, well, homework is bad, I'm going to say, who says? Because homework is bad, that's your opinion. You need to come to the table with concrete evidence, research, and data that proves homework is bad. Then I'm going to believe you. And you do this with valuable resources, sources that are credible. In other words, you're not going to tell me, well, homework is bad because all the kids on Facebook are saying it's bad. That's not really credible. That's not really research. You know, hey, my friend just posted on Instagram that homework is bad. Hmm. No, not going to believe that either. So when you say that a source is credible, you know, it's written by an author. It may be a doctor, something that's been published, something that's legit, something that is recent. Please don't, you know, set, give me some article that was written in the 1900s about homework. I need something that's dated uh, or updated, uh, rather dated. So look at my example below. Um, to help you establish credibility, it's very wise, if you're able, to include your source. Because now, instead of just saying, hey, athletes have homework, listen to how much more credible this sounds. In September's 2016 Sports Illustrated article, The Start of Something Big, Kevin Lyles states that players have homework. Packets of worksheets are passed out with one page for each play in the game plan. Okay, this definitely sounds better than, hey, athletes have homework too. So sounding credible means including the title of your source. So I'm going to be checking to make sure you know how to do this. Um, you definitely need to have something when you pause this video and you add notes to evidence, you need to talk about how it needs to be credible. You need to write down that you have to mention the title of your resources and the author's name to establish this credibility. Look guys, if I were you, I would write this example down. I would copy this example down word for word so that you can see exactly um, how to include the evidence, uh, I'm sorry, rather how to include your resource in the evidence. Let me uh, show you, let's find a place for you to copy this example down. Okay, perfect. You can't get a better spot than this. You have that blank area right underneath evidence. This is where I think um, I think you should write down that example. Okay, that way you have it in your notes. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video. Make any changes uh, to your pencil definition with ink, and feel free to use um, my notes. I'll get you back to that spot. So right about here, this is a good place for you to hit pause so that you can copy down the example and change your pencil definition to make it look more like mine. So go ahead and pause and work on that, work on those revisions.
Next, we are going to talk about the commentary starter. And listen, you know, this is really similar to actually transition words, if that helps you kind of remember them. It's a starter, as transition words are. Um, you know, the transition words are kind of like a evidence starter. Uh, the commentary starter is going to start your commentary sentence, which we haven't talked about yet. They are going to force you to write a commentary sentence correctly. These starters are required. It is not optional for my students to not use them. So I will provide for you, um, and maybe I already have that little blue sheet. If you haven't gotten it yet, you will. And it's going to have a list of starters that you can use. And these are going to force you. They will make you write your commentary sentence correctly. The commentary starters are very important and they are required. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and make your changes. Next, let's look at the actual commentary sentence. It's going to be an explanation that ties your evidence back to your topic sentence. It relates and explains how your support is connected to your reason in your topic sentence. Okay, so if I've given you a piece of evidence and I use that, let's use the Sports Illustrated, I need to write a commentary sentence that comes right here, right after it, that's going to relate this back to my topic sentence, which homework is bad. Um, so the commentary sentence will always come right after your evidence, and it's always going to have a commentary starter. It's going to explain how your evidence relates to your topic sentence. So right here, this is what you have to get in your notes when you make your revisions to your pencil definition. It's going to explain um, how your evidence relates back to your topic sentence, which is your main idea. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and make those corrections. All right, next is your clencher. This is also known as the concluding sentence. Different teachers use different words. That's okay. They both mean the same thing. But your clencher is basically uh, the sentence that wraps up your point. You're basically going to say the same thing that you did in your topic sentence, but you're going to have to use different words. You're going to have synonyms here. It is always the last sentence in the paragraph, and it will always be one sentence. All right, so you might want to go ahead and pause your notes and make the changes, the revisions to your pencil definition. So if you had to write a paragraph right now, I want to show you that there are going to be exactly eight sentences. And I love this little format outline for you because if you had to write one right now, I would want to have this right in front of me. So that when I go to write my first sentence, I know it's my topic sentence. Then I'm like, ooh, what comes next? Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to have my transition word. And then I'm going to have my evidence. The third sentence is going to be your commentary starter. And then you're going to have your commentary sentence. Your fourth sentence, and then you're going to do this three times. So here's what I want you to see. It's going to repeat. Look, I'm going to use the same colors so that you can see the repetition. Transition word, and then I have my evidence. I'm going to have my commentary starter, and then I'm going to have my commentary sentence. So then it's got to be green next. Transition word, yellow for my evidence, orange for my commentary starter, and it looks like I've used purple for my commentary sentence. Do you see that pattern? If I count, I see one, two, I see three patterns repeated. Then, of course, I will end with my clencher sentence down here. So my first sentence introduces my topic, my concluding sentence closes, and I have three examples in the middle of the paragraph with commentary sentences that explain how the evidence relates back to my topic. So this is a nice little pattern for you. I think the best next thing for us to do right now is honestly, let's practice together. Okay, so let's do this one together. I don't have pink on uh, my uh, program here, but I do have red. So my topic sentence will be red. And then it looks like I need to have my transition words green. 
My evidence will be yellow. My commentary starter will be orange. And then my actual sentence will be purple. And my clencher will be blue. So I'm going to kind of keep this key to help me as I uh, venture on down here and I label the parts of this example paragraph with these right colors, okay? All right, so let's move on down and look at our paragraph. Okay, the first thing I have to do is I have to make my topic sentence red, well, pink. So you have highlighters at your table right now, so go ahead and get a pink highlighter and let's identify the topic sentence. And I know if I look back into my notes, which sentence is my topic sentence? In my notes, it says that it's always the first sentence. So here's my topic sentence right here, and I would highlight that pink. Okay, that's my topic sentence because it's always the first sentence, and look, it's always one sentence. Next, it says that I need to identify my transition words orange, or sorry, green. And I remember that my transition words introduced my evidence, and I also remember them saying I would have three by the time I was done. So let me see if I can find all three. Well, you know what? I won't go out of order. Okay, so now I've got my evidence. I'm looking for my evidence. It's yellow, and I know that it comes right after my transition word because my transition word introduces. So there it is. Look, for example, a survey was provided to Ridgeview students and 50% of the students, this is my evidence, it makes perfect sense. Then I've got my orange commentary starter and here it is. So you're probably looking hopefully at your blue starter slip that I gave you that has all of these examples of commentary starters on it. And I'm pretty sure if you look at that little blue paper, you're going to see this shows that. This is what your starter looks like, but I'm pretty sure this year it might be a blue. Pretty sure. Okay? So on that little blue piece of paper, you can see that you have these nice little starters, and they're right here, and these are going to be all orange. This shows, this clearly demonstrates, this identifies. Look at all those commentary starters right at your fingertips. So I've identified my commentary, and now I'm just guessing that my commentary sentence will follow. And this is where I'm gonna relate it back to my topic sentence. Homework takes forever because we don't understand it half the time and we spend hours trying to figure it out. This goes back up to my topic sentence saying that, look at there, that homework takes forever. So I've explained how it relates. All right, so next, remember, I'm supposed to have three transition words. I only have one. So I see my second one, because I'm starting over again. I know that I have to have three pieces of evidence. And so far I have one. So I, right here is my second. So after my transition word, I know that I'm going to have more evidence. And then I better see a commentary starter. This emphasizes that. And then after our commentary starter, I know that I'm going to have my actual sentence of it relating back to the topic sentence. So that would come next. So there's my second example. Do you see how the colors are starting to repeat? It's the pattern. So my commentary sentence, this emphasizes at the point that students are busy after school and won't have the time to put into homework because it takes forever. So again, my commentary sentence is showing how it relates back to my topic sentence. Okay, and then I have my third transition word. After that, I can see the numbers here. More evidence. There's my um, commentary starter. And after that, I bet I have my, uh, let's see how it's gonna relate back to the topic sentence. This clearly demonstrates that students might be practicing the concepts the wrong way, and therefore it would be a waste of the little time they do have. Is this talking about how homework can take forever? It sure is. So again, it, you know, it's going to be, it, it's a waste of time, but it'll, it's, it's going to be a lot of time because students are, are practicing it the wrong way, and therefore, you know, that great amount of time that they practice the wrong way is a complete waste. All right, and then finally... We come to an end with our clencher.
and I can tell that I have my three pieces of evidence because I have my three transition words. I began with my topic, I ended with my concluding clencher sentence, and I have I see the I see the three different patterns of evidence. It goes green, yellow, orange, purple, green, yellow, orange, purple, green, yellow, orange, purple. I have to see that pattern because that's going to let me know that I have my three pieces of evidence. Okay, so now what I want you to do is kind of set the video off to the side and I want you to try and do this by yourself. Feel free to look back and look at your notes, but I'm not going to walk you through it this time. I want for you to identify each of these parts and be able to explain why if I call on you. So go ahead and get your highlighters ready, pause the video, and when you're done, come back to the video, unpause it, and we'll see how you did. So you're gonna highlight now. You're gonna go through this and you're gonna highlight all of the parts with the colored highlights, uh, colored highlighters, just like we did on the prior page. So eventually yours is gonna look uh, just like what we did over here, okay? And I think it would be a good idea while we're practicing for you to number the three pieces of evidence in your body paragraph, just for extra practice. Okay, so you just practiced by yourself. So let's check your work and see how you did. Um, hopefully your paragraph looks something like this. And uh, you have your, you've got your pink topic sentence identified. You have three transition words because we know that that's very, very important. And we have our yellow pieces of evidence, one, two and three, I see them, and I better have, right, I, I likewise had better have three commentary sentences, and I see them, they're purple, or lack of a purple highlighter, that's kind of like a weird fuchsia color, but whatever, um, and so, and I see my, like I just showed you my transition words, if I have three transition words, how many commentary starters should I have? Probably three, right? So take a second and pause this and um, make sure that you have all the right parts highlighted. I do want to point out what great, what a great clencher this is because it's restated and they used, they said the same thing as the topic sentence, which is homework is so boring for many students. If that's my topic sentence, I can't have my concluding sentence be homework is so boring for many students. So look at the concluding sentence. There is a time and place for homework, but it must be purposeful and interesting to prevent students from becoming bored. So I'm still talking about bored, aren't I? But look, you guys, it's said in such a different way, um, in you know different synonyms, but it's still making the same point. This is a really good example for you to look at for a topic sentence compared to a clencher because you're going to have to do the same thing. All right, uh, when you have checked your work over and you are happy with it, these notes, um, it's imperative that they stay inside the notes section of your binder. Uh, you one day will be asked to get them out and you'll be writing a paragraph for me and you're going to be allowed to use your notes to help guide you. That is why these are called your guided notes. So you need to keep these someplace safe along with uh, your definitions. Make sure you put the headphones back, stack the iPads in the middle of the table when you are done using your iPad, and you have completed your first set of guided notes with self-assessment. Good job.